Hello, everyone. If you like what I'm doing here, please consider subscribing, liking, and commenting. It would really help the channel out quite a bit. Thank you very much. The first Eddie Bracken story. In the words of Shakespeare, there is a tide in the affairs of men which, taken at the flood, leads on to fortune. This is the story of a man who took that tide at the full flood. And got wet. This is the story of Eddie Bracken. It begins at the beginning. When Eddie Bracken first tiptoed into this world, silent and sleepy as a sandman. Doctor, I wish you'd examine this one again. The Bracken child? There's nothing wrong with him. He just looks like that. <laughs> but uh, don't put him in the nursery window again. It only discourages people. Uh, he keeps this poor little girl next to him awake all night. Ten years later, that little girl was keeping him awake night. Eddie? Oh, Eddie? Me? Did you call me, Connie? Uh-huh. Would you do me a big favor? Gosh, you're Connie. I'd be glad to. Will you carry my books home from school today? Oh, gosh, I've been wanting to carry your books home for a long time. Here they are. My house is the third from the quarter. Yeah, I know. Tell my father I stopped for an ice cream soda with Otto. Oh. You better hurry. Well, all right, Connie. I'll run as fast as I can. <laughs> Eddie ran too fast. He fell in a mud puddle, ruined Connie's books, sold his bicycle to replace them, thereby losing his paper route to mention a few things. Thus, Eddie learned about women the hard way. <laughs> now, today, the most beautiful girl in the world could walk down Main Street with a load of bundles and say, Hello, Eddie. Would you do me a big favor? And a worldly wise Eddie would cast an appraising peeper at the tonnage of that freight and snappily reply, Yeah, it's your time. <laughs> I'd be glad to. Here, will you take these bundles to the boarding house for me? Oh, sure. And I'll be by and pick you up tonight at 8, huh? Oh, Eddie, you don't mind if we postpone our date until next week, do you? Next week? But tonight's the night. Chump and Jive Jackson and his band are in town for only one night, and that's tonight. I know, but you see, I had a switch date with Otto. Otto? Saturday night is Otto's night. He's going to the hospital this Saturday. He has to have his appendix taken out. Well, can't he have his appendix taken out without taking you out, too? <laughs> I mean, if he's that sick, he ought to stay home and rest. Otto is facing a crisis. Otto is a crisis. <laughs> Eddie. Well, I can't very well refuse a man a, a date on his deathbed. Besides, I've always given you every Monday night. This is the first time in three years there's been any place to go on Monday. Very well. I'll go with you, Eddie. You will? Yes. Even with an appendix on my conscience. Oh, gee, Connie, I wouldn't want you to go with me if you weren't going to have a good time, but... Uh, oh, thanks, Eddie. I but, knew uh, you'd understand. <laughs> But, but, but... The only trouble is, Otto can't get any tickets for the dance. Naturally, they've been sold out for two weeks. But now that you're not going, maybe you wouldn't oh, mind if Oh, we... no. <laughs> oh, no. First you break our date, then you want my tickets. You don't know what I... I oh, I... right, Eddie. But you don't know what I went through for those. I had to help Jerry Mason stack three tons of fertilizer and... and... <laughs> I said, all right, Eddie. Otto and I don't have to go to the dance. And even then, he charged me more than he... Where else would you go? <laughs> oh, we can take a drive. Where to? Someplace. <laughs> Observation Hill? <laughs> Perhaps. And park up there? Perhaps. 
in the dark. Oh, it won't be so dark. There's a full moon tonight. Yeah. Here, take the ticket. Eddie, you're so understanding. And now you better hurry with those bundles. Papa's waiting for them, and I'm due at the beauty shop. Anything else? Yes, stop at the Emporium and get Papa's shoes. I left them there to be de-squeezed. Do I have to use a stamp for these baby booties? Yes, ma'am. Your name, please? Smith. Mary Smith. And uh, your address, Mrs. Smith? The Dewdrop Inn Motel. Hello, Barbara. Oh, hello, Eddie. I came for Mr. Monaghan's shoes. Oh, yes, I'll wrap them right away, Eddie. I, um, I suppose you're taking Connie to your jumping jive Jackson tonight. Oh. Oh, is his band in town? <laughs> yes, and I thought you'd be taking Connie. No. I don't care much for that kind of stuff. Neither do I. Uh, Eddie, there's a new Dr. Gillespie picture at the Strand. This time he straightens out a mental case. I'd rather see him take out an appendix. <laughs> Would you like to take me, Dad? Well, it's it's a little warm for the movies, Barbara. Oh, yes, it is. We could go up to Observation Hill and cool off. <laughs> No, you wouldn't cool off up there either. I mean... I mean, it's hot everywhere. All right, you suggest something. Well, I... Young um... lady, I suggest you give me my package. Oh, oh. oh, I'm sorry, Mrs. Smith. Here you are. And here's yours, Eddie. All right, thanks, Barbara. See you later. Oh, Eddie, I... No, that's not the right stamp, Mrs. Smith. If you'd like to, we could... The airplane stamp, not the howitzer. We could... Bye, Barbara. Make fun. What do you want? <laughs> it's me, Eddie. How do you do, Mr. Monahan? How do you do, Mr. Monahan? <laughs> Come in. Do you have to stand out there and be so formal? Can't you see I'm in my underwear? <laughs> oh, that's all right, Mr. Monahan. Don't mind me. I always feel like, well, like I'm part of the family. Almost like you were my father. Yeah? Well, I'm not taking the rap for that. <laughs> <laughs> Connie asked me to pick up your shoes at the Emporium. Oh, good. Did they get the squeaks out of them? Huh? Fine thing. Me, an insurance agent with squeaky shoes. I got to sneak up on people. Well, where are they? Aren't they in the box? Aren't they in the box? This is what's in the box. Just when have I been paddling around town in baby booty? <laughs> Do these look like my shoes? Look, those are my last pair of shoes. Well, they and must I... be there somewhere. They were there when I left the store. I suppose they got out and they walked home, huh? I got to have those shoes, see? There's a new insurance agent in town. And he's sticking his big schnozzle into my territory. Oh, uh, well, you don't have to worry about him, Mr. Monahan. He can't possibly have your persuasive salesmanship. No? Well, he's trying to join my lodge, see? I gotta go down there tonight and blackball him. <laughs> Say, did he slip you something to hijack my shoes? Oh, no, Mr. Monahan, no. Now, listen, Lunkhead. If you don't find those I'll shoes... I cannot find them that time, Mr. Monahan. <laughs> I'll find them. I'll find them. Bob must have made a mistake in giving your shoes to the woman who bought the, bought, the, bought the booties. You see, here's the sales slip. It says, Mrs. Smith at the Dewdrop Inn Motel. I'll motel you. No, well, you just give me a minute, Mrs. Uh, Mr. Monahan. I'll be back in, a, in, 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 in an hour. Excuse me. Do you have a Smith in this motel? Are you kidding? <laughs> Mary Smith. <laughs> Mrs. Mary Smith. Who wants to know? Me. My name is Bracken. Eddie Bracken. I have something... Third called... cabin up, number 13. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Yes, 
Oh, you. What are you doing here? How do you do? I'm sorry I barged in on you like this, Mrs. Smith, but Barbara gave you the wrong box. <laughs> here are your baby booties. What? Those don't belong to me. I don't have a baby. You don't have a baby? No, I don't have a baby. You've got to have a baby. <laughs> I mean, I need Mr. Monahan's shoes. I don't have a baby, and I don't have Mr. Monahan's shoes. Is that a crime? Well, it may lead to one. <laughs> don't you remember me? We were in the Emporium and Bob. For the last time, there is no baby here. <laughs> Your husband? <laughs> All right. All right, come in. You see, I was in a hurry, and, and I just didn't... Oh. oh, she's one of the cutest babies I've ever seen. Oh. <laughs> Can I hold her a minute, please? Ah. Uh, uh. Bookie, 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 bookie. Ah. <laughs> uh. uh. She likes me. She's going to break a lot of hearts when she grows up. <laughs> yes, sir. What's her name? Sam. <laughs> Excuse me. I have to finish packing these suitcases. <laughs> He's teasing. What he needs is to have his gums rub. Like this. See? That's all he needs. Uh, you like babies, don't you, Eddie? Oh, sure. I'm crazy about them. Sometimes I look after Mrs. Orsendorf. Mrs. Orsendorf runs the boarding house over on Maple Street. There. All packed. Oh, okay. Can I put them in the car for you? I'd appreciate it. They're rather heavy. I'll bring the baby. Yeah. Eddie, I think you're very nice. Oh, gee, thank you. Here. You hold the baby while I get in. Oh. I think you're a very reliable person, Eddie. I could trust you with anything. Oh, thank you. So I want you to keep it. Oh, gee, thanks very much. Keep them! <laughs> Well, did you get rid of those baby shoes? Yes, sir. <laughs> but now I've got the baby. <laughs> well, that's something anyhow. Oh, what? Shh, Mr. Monaghan, you might wake him up. I wish somebody would wake me up. Where did you get that thing? Where did... Ah, where's Connie? <laughs> there, now see what you've done. Never mind what I've done. Where's my daughter? Oh, well, I don't know, Mr. Monaghan. Are you and Connie secretly married? <laughs> <laughs> Me married to Connie? <laughs> what gave you that idea? <laughs> Why did you say you were part of the family? Like I was your father. Oh, because I do. You've been very kind to me at times. <laughs> but we're not married. I certainly wish we were. Oh, you do, do you? Oh, yes, sir. Connie is one of the nicest girls that I've ever met. Ever since we... Uh, ever... Oh, you think the... Ba oh, oh, no, oh, no, Mr. Monaghan. No, 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 I, 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 was, I, I was just walk, walking along... Papa! Just like that. I'm home, Papa! <laughs> Come here, look me in the face. Oh, Papa, must I? <laughs> Never mind the smart tracks. Do you see what Eddie has... Eddie, where on earth did you it get... It was a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> Whose mistake? Mine. I mean... <laughs> I got Mrs. Smith's baby shoes by mistake, so I went to the motel to return them, and the baby started crying, and I said, gee, that's a cute baby. And she said, do you like babies? And I said, yes, and she gave them to me. <laughs> And drove off. 
Doesn't sound very logical, does it? <laughs> oh, I don't know. I don't think anybody else could do it, but I think you could. I'll bet it's the same one, too. Huh? Same as which? The Ogrebach baby is missing. Oh, you know the heir to the Peter Ogrebach peanut butter fortune. They traced it as far as this town. Oh, that's terrible. Anybody that would steal a helpless little baby ought to be struck. <laughs> this isn't it. it. It can't be. It, it, it couldn't be. But it is. There are the initials on the blanket. P. U. Junior. Oh, oh, brother! If they find them here, that's all I need to wash me up in this town. There's something about it in the evening paper. I'll go down and get it. Oh no, you don't. You're not walking out at a time like this and leaving me holding a hot baby. <laughs> Now, before we get into our act two of the Eddie Bracken story, let's take a breather with the orchestra. And now back to the Maison Monahan, where Eddie and Mr. Monahan are still carrying the ball. The eighth ball. Where's Connie? What's she doing with that paper? Oh, gee, Holy I... smoke, why don't she... Here it is, Papa. Well, it's about time. Look, it's all over the front page of the evening post. Unkerbach baby's still missing. Gee. Well, don't just stand there. Read it. Interviewed at the Hotel Hoxie today, Mr. Unkerbach revealed that his son, heir to the Unkerbach peanut butter fortune, was taken from the apartment by his wife after the two had quarreled violently over the attentions of another man. Oh, then the baby wasn't really kidnapped. Oh, boy, now they won't blame me. But, gee, Mr. Unkerbach must be awful worried about his baby. I'd better hurry down to the hotel and put his mind at rest. I'll be right back. Go ahead. What else does this say? Mrs. Unkerbach was traced to the Dewdrop Inn Motel where the manager alleges she was joined by a man named Eddie Bracken. Eddie Bracken? Mr. Unkerbach says this is undoubtedly the man who stole his wife and child and threatens to shoot him on sight. Oh, Papa! And Eddie is the guy who always said he didn't need life insurance. We've got to stop him. He'll be killed. If he'd have had a policy, the company would have paid off like a slot machine. <laughs> Don't you understand? Eddie will get shot. And if the gun jammed and he got pushed out the window, devil indemnity. <laughs> hey, looking back, I can't shoot Eddie. Well, thank heavens you woke up. Nobody is shooting Eddie, see? Nobody. Not until I get my shoes. <laughs> Mr. Ankerback? I'm sorry, but I'm not seeing any more reporters today. Oh, I'm not a reporter, Mr. Ankerback. My name is Eddie Brack. I'm sorry, I... I'm not seeing any more. It... You said Eddie Brackman? Yes, sir. 
You don't know me, but... Uh, but I've I... been looking forward to meeting you. Won't you come in, Mr. Bracken? Oh. Oh, you can just call me Eddie. Like my wife. Yes. Yes, she calls me Eddie. <laughs> oh. So you're Eddie Bracken. <laughs> How did you know about your wife and me? Well, I'm a little slow, but eventually I catch on. Then you must know how I got the baby. Mm-hmm. So you're Eddie Bracken. <laughs> well, I must say you're taking it calmly. No, if I, if I were in your shoes, I'd be wild. I'm wild enough. Where is she now? Well, I don't know. I haven't seen her since we were at the motel. <laughs> so, you admit you were there? Oh, yes. We got along fine. <laughs> She's very friendly. <laughs> Makes you feel right at home. <laughs> But I can't help thinking it was foolish of her to run off. After all, she didn't know me that well. No, I can't do it. I can't do it. Do what? Shoot you. Shoot, 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 shoot me? You're the type that should be strangled. Oh, stealing you. a man's wife and child. Oh, you, you, you think you... Th oh, oh, no, oh, no, no, Mr. Uncle Back, no. I never saw... I never, I never saw your wife until she put the booty... Put the booty uh, bought, the, bought the booty, and then she ran off leaving me holding the bag. Uh, the, the bag. <laughs> yeah, the, 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 the baby. Oh. Who are you? Eddie, Eddie, it's me. It's I, and who are you? Don't kill him. No, he fainted. Oh, where's the water? Never mind, this will bring him to. Where am I? Where? Oh, 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 Connie, Connie, tell him, tell him, I, tell him that, the, tell him. I'll kill him. Sorry, Mr. Ugerbach, but you're barking up a horse with the wrong color. Connie, Connie, Connie did, 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 just, just tell him. I'll kill him. Look, Mr. Ugerbach, you want to know by just looking at Eddie, the new woman would run away with him. Yeah, yeah, just look at me. He's strictly the homie type. Yeah, I'm homie. Boy, am I homie. <laughs> You've heard of faces that only a mother could love. Well, he's an orphan. Now, wait a minute, Connie. You didn't have to go that far. If that's the case, how did he get my child? Your wife knew they were stopping cars on the road looking for a woman with a baby, so she left him with Eddie and planned to come back for him when the heat was off. Well, you seem to know all about it, young lady. And how? Your wife changed her mind and came to Mrs. Orsendorf looking for Eddie. She said she wouldn't have run away in the first place if it hadn't been for your insane jealousy. I can't help being jealous of her. She's so beautiful. <laughs> Why, if I thought she'd come back, I, I'd do anything. Tell it to her. She'll believe it. Women are screwballs. <laughs> She's waiting downstairs in the lobby now. Oh, thank you, young lady. Thank you. And thank you, too, Eddie. I, I thought I'd lost her forever. Well, uh, goodbye. Well, that's that. Let's go, Eddie. You go ahead. I want to take a walk in the park. I don't feel very good. <laughs> Why? Oh, well, nothing. Because of what I said about you? I'm going home. You don't like me. <laughs> I had to say those things, Eddie. You'll be late for the dance. He was going to kill you. Otto will be waiting. Eddie, will you take me to the dance? You want to go with me? Yes. Anna, you don't want to go with me. <laughs> That's the stuff. Stand up for your rights and don't take yes for an answer. You mean you're breaking your date with Otto to keep the date you broke with me? Well, in a way, the doctor won't let him go. Oh. Maybe it was a dirty trick of me. To... Oh, no, Connie. You were just trying to be nice to him. You're always doing nice things to people. That's why... That's why you're so... You're so wonderful. Eddie! You are. That's why... That's why I've always been... Always been... What? I mean, I, I think you're the... You're the most... The most... The most... The most what? Connie, I... I... Yes? 
I gotta press my pants before we go. <laughs> and so Eddie went to the dance with Connie, and they had a wonderful time. At least that would be the storybook ending. But storybook endings just don't happen with Eddie. Well, while Eddie is pressing his pants in anticipation of a glorious evening, let's listen. You look beautiful. Thank you, Eddie. You don't know how I've been looking forward to this evening, dancing with you and... and hey, and... where do you two monkeys think you're going? To dance, Mr. Monaghan. Jump and jive Jackson. Yeah, well, what about the jump and jive blackballing I've got to take care of at the lodge? Where are my shoes? Didn't Mrs. Unkerback give them to you? No, Mrs. Unkerback didn't give them to me. Well, that's terrible. She must have forgot. I'd lend you a pair of mine, but these are all I have. I always give my shoe stamps to what Mrs. What size do you wear? Hey. I always give my shoe stamps to Mrs. Oh, oh no, Mr. Monahan, no, not my shoes, not tonight. Come Mr. on, Monaghan. give me those shoes. Oh no, no, please, please, Mr. Monahan, those are the only pair I have, Mr. Monahan. Oh, now give me that other oh, shoe. No, Papa, no. You keep out of this powder, push. Mr. Monahan, please, no, no, Come on, jump and jive, Jackson, Mr. Monahan. Oh. Ah. Huh. Hmm. No arch supporters. <laughs> well, they're better than nothing. But, Mr. Monaghan, I... Now what, Tenderfoot? <laughs> you know, Connie, I was just thinking, jitterbugging is a very dangerous sport. People always falling and breaking things. Now, um, if, if we stayed home and... Uh, and... and made fudge... I... <laughs> This story was written by Robert Riley Crutcher and directed by Man Hollander. Music composed and conducted by Lee Harleen. Mr. Monahan was played by Bill Demarest. Connie by Ann Rutherford. Barbara by Janet Waldo. Mr. and Mrs. Unkerbach by Wally Mayer and Kathy Lewis. The motel manager by Will Wright. Eddie and Connie at the age of 10 by Tommy Cook and Gloria McMillan. The baby by Leona Ledoux. Your are <laughs> This is the Armed Forces Radio Service.